Hi folks, my name is William Eccles. This is going to be a follow-up video uh, that I'm recording because some people were asking about the bivy shelter that I uh, carry with me when I uh, go hiking or uh, you know, camping out in the Everglades or something like that. Um, this is a uh, Slumberjack summer bivy shelter. I don't think they produce this anymore. Um, I've carried it with me. I picked this up when I was in the Marine Corps more than 15 years ago and uh, it carried with me ever since then. I liked it a lot better than the, the mosquito net that was issued to me. Um, and uh, well, enough about talking about my past. Let me show it to you. So, comes in a small stuff sack. Uh, it's supposed to come with uh, six or eight uh, stakes and two poles. Um, it came with two fiberglass poles. I replaced the fiberglass poles with aluminum ones, and I get by with just two stakes. Uh, it also had two other bags that came in here, one to keep the uh, pole separate and the other one to keep the stake separate, but I just chucked those to save weight. Uh, I was always misplacing them anyway, so I got a stuff sack, I'll throw that out of the way. Got a rain fly, and then the main compartment. Hopefully this will all fit in the frame, it's going to be pretty close. So it's pretty simple, just lay it out. The shorter pole goes down at the foot. I think this also came with a ground claw. I never bothered with one. Um, like I said, it's got over 15 years of Let's see, maybe almost 20 years of service. I think I bought this back in 1993, and it's 2011 now, so yeah, quite a few years of service. But, obviously, as you can see, this is not self-supporting. Let's get this one up in the head. Uh, just for strength wise so you can see it, it's got a nylon strap that goes down here along the base so when uh, this um, pole is put in and it's pulled tight on here, it won't overstress the bottom of the tent. Take one stick, put it out the head. The other one, put it out the foot. And I'm kind of rushing just because we're on camera. I'm trying to cut down on the time. There you have it. I think I'm a little twisted right here. All right, that gives you an idea how it sets up. It has one opening right here at the front get in and out. There's not a whole lot of room, so like if you want to cook or anything else like that, you got to lay down. But you can get inside, there's plenty of room. Let's see if you can still see me on camera. Yep. So if I needed to, I got space here to cook. Got plenty of room to lay out the ISO mat and uh, can keep some gear up here at the head. It's got a little sack here on the side to keep your items from moving around in case you worry about losing them if you're at a slope. Plus and minuses of this thing. Plus this thing only weighs it's less than two pounds. It's like just under two pounds with the rain fly stakes and everything. Uh, you saw the size of the stuff sack so it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. Uh, the only thing I ever that I did not like about this was uh, um, you saw it, it's only opening up uh, as you're laying down on your right hand side. So let's say you're on a, a slope and um, the rock is here. 
uh, you know, sometimes if you want the open, the opening will not always be on the correct side that you need. You know, sometimes you might be on the downslope, so you got to flip it around, and then this might be opening up into some trees or a rock or you know, some brush or something like that. Uh, I'll show it to you with the rain fly on where I set it. There's nothing fancy about the rain fly. And as you remember, I said it came with. Uh, I think six or eight stakes. You saw the two that I put out on either end to give it the support. And you can put some extra ones in on each side of the pole to help hold it in place if it's windy. The rain fly just goes on. And if I wanted to take the time to do it, it clips on either corner, on each corner where the poles make contact to the ground and on each end where the stakes go into the ground. And then you just pull it tight and it opens up on the rain fly the same way it did on the side of the shelter. Now, like I said, I don't think Silverjack is making this anymore. Um, uh, I can't think of it, but I did see another company that was producing these still. So if you're looking for a lightweight option, um, other than just having a tarp, um, you know, I, I like this. You know, it keeps the critters from crawling around on me. Um, and then another thing I didn't mention here, uh, if you do have extra gear, there is a small little compartment here that is waterproof or yeah, water resistant. You know, the rain fly goes over it, plus the nylon of the, the main tent goes over it. So you can stuff some gear in there to keep it dry, like you can put your boots or something like that. But typically, um, my pack is waterproof anyway, so I just set it next to the tent. And inside, I'll put my ISO mat. Um, I'll keep my boots and sleeping bag and headlamp and everything else in here with me. Uh, I just crawl into it, take my boots off, set them to the side, go to sleep, wake up, slide my boots back on, I'm ready to go. So um, hopefully uh, this answers the questions for the people that were commenting and, and writing me and asking me about this bivy you know, and why I chose this over a hammock. Um, the reason I chose this over a hammock is I'm more comfortable sleeping on my chest, so hammock is not very conducive to that. Do I have hammocks? Yes. Have I slept in them? Yes. I, but I find this more comfortable. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be safe out there and enjoy your adventures.